great pleasure for me to be in Duhallow, I have to say. Um, growing up in, in, the, in the city, like, like John, uh, up on the shelf used to be Shalikas Duhallow. And uh, you'd pull it down and you'd be looking through and wondering about this magic part of the world and, and everything it, it had to offer. And you'd learn so much from it. And indeed, I've always gone to uh, the journal and always uh, had, had opportunity now, having students and so on from, uh, from this area to um, to, as I say, it's, it's, it, it gives me great pleasure to come back in here because I feel I'm coming in, not coming to the age of anything, but coming into the centre of, of things. And I know that John has been on the phone to me over the last while talking about the enthusiasm. Uh, you know, I get an old text uh, saying, wow, what, what headstones, what a group, you know, what, what a project that's going on. And um, I think uh, it's, it's very interesting for, uh, in many ways, um, someone like myself or someone like John to come into an area like this, which is so hugely rich with oral history, uh, with oral folklore, with people who were living their heritage to such a, 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 an extent. And I think the project that uh, Eve are undertaking with the historic graves is a really wonderful catalyst because sometimes it takes some kind of, you know, green, green lit, green heart, whatever we are, <coughs> fellas, to come in with some sort of ideas and so on who want to hear and who want to listen again to the, the accounts that people uh, are, are telling each other. But what John has done and what I think this project has done in an amazing way is that you know he, it's brought some technology. Uh, and I know there's technology involved in all sorts of recording now, but I always remember John when we were at university, John was one of the first guys ever Computers were only just coming in. We're, we're a bit older than we look, but computers were just <laughs> just coming in that time. And John was one of the great advocates of, of computers sitting down, you know, writing things, typing things up. And John has always been on the crest of that wave. And I come along here tonight, and you know, I'm looking at video technology. I'm looking at internet technology. I'm looking at cameras, which GPS systems recording things. Android phones where you can get an app if you're sitting in a bar. I don't want you to be looking at your phone for, but if you're sitting in the bar, uh, you know you can find the local graveyard with the person that's around. And even since I've been involved with John, you know I come along tonight and I see new things again, things that I hadn't seen six months ago. Look at these fantastic um, um, family name maps uh, which he's created, which gives you an amazing way of interpreting what the graveyard is about. Um, these air tech photographs. I've never seen anything like those. What a brilliant way of conceptualizing, of visualizing part of your local heritage. So to me, what you're looking at here is someone who's got a huge amount of uh, savvy in understanding how projects uh, can be put together, but tapping into two aspects. One is the local community and the energy and the knowledge that's there. But also, as John said tonight, using that technology to actually make it available to all of you, but to all of the other people out there as well. And I think that's one of the things that I'm taking from this evening, is the, uh, the application of this and the extent to which an innovative project like this um, is, is accessible and is, is useful. Um, the, there might be someone sitting down at a computer in Melbourne, Australia, or somewhere in the Seychelles, or somewhere in South America, tapping into their ancestry tonight and being able to see a photograph of their headstone. And any of you who have been involved in family history or in local history will know how absolutely fantastic it is to find that gem or find that piece of information. And um, it reminds me of one particular story. And, and uh, it's um, one story, was, I was at a conference in, in Oxford, it sounds very posh now, but uh, it was a very posh affair and I was like this little fellow going along from Ireland, you know, keeping my head down. And uh, it was introduced to a guy called Theodore Zeldin. Now, Theodore Zeldin was uh, written up by somebody to say he was one of the 50 greatest minds alive today. So I said, I better go over and have a chat with him and maybe be a, a good guy to pick his brains, you know. And I went over to, to Theodore anyway and I said to him, uh, uh, you know, what are you after writing lately? And he says, uh, I just wrote for you know, I just wrote a history of France. And I said, you know, I was thinking about that for a while. And I said, you know, thinking of how big a country it is and its huge history and the complexity of its culture and its different regions and its cuisine and everything else. 
And I said, gee, Max, you know, how, how did she manage to do that? You know, thinking like, uh, you know, and he said, well, she, I went from the specific to the general. And I also go from the general to the specific. And that phrase, going from the specific to the general, has stayed inside in my head all of these years. Why? Because the projects that you see here, and the wonderful stories, and, and I don't use the, story, the word story, by the way, in a derogatory way. History, the word history, contains the word story. So the stories and the histories that we've heard here tonight being recounted are the specific. They're specific and they're important to individuals, they're important to families, they're important to uh, neighborhoods, they're important to community groups, to parishes, and you can spread it out to regions, to Duhallo, to North Cork, to Munster, to Ireland, and you can keep going. That to me is the specific to the general. And without projects like this, and without the type of recording and the type of work that's going on here, you know, we have no stories to tell each other, no meaningful stories. And that's what the value, I think, of the, uh, of, of the project is. Um, I've got a few notes here, I'm just going to have a look at the... The other thing I think is, is quite um, interesting, and it was re referred to tonight, is that this is a project, I think John is quite amazing because John comes in and he's one guy, uh, whenever you read him, he's, he's talking about graveyards, you know? I think he's got a bit of a, a problem and uh, uh, he's always hanging around graveyards and he gets quite excited about headstones, you know? And, uh, uh, you know uh, the, the simpler it is or the more mistakes upon it or whatever, you know, is, is really good. But I think it's very important that it's, 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 it may be axiomatic to say this, but it, this is a project not about the date, as, as was said tonight a few times. This is a project about the living. It's about the living uh, community and it's about keeping memory alive, the things that are alive. I, I wrote down a note tonight and said, someone said, you know, um, someone in the speakers tonight, and there were really wonderful contributions, said, I always, someone, some lady in the locality was, a, was great at oral history. I really regret that we didn't write it down. Well, here you are. You're all not just writing it down but you're using the modern technology now to record it and to keep it. And this is probably, if someone says, well, I regret that we didn't write it down, well, that's the motivation for a project like this and to keep it going. Because I think what John does is that he comes in, he whizzes in with the Historic Graves project, he gets everybody enthusiastic, and he sows a seed that, and I've been involved in other projects like this with John, and there's, in my own local community up in, up in Montana, uh, that there's, we're still recording, we're still going around, and we're using the memory and the graveyard, you know, which is about the date in a way, but we're keeping them alive and we're keeping those, uh, uh, those memories uh, um, together. So I think that's, that's a great testimony uh, to Manners as well. I'm really intrigued, as John said, I'm, I'm interested in, um, in mythology and I'm interested in aspects of folklore as well. And John was saying that he was involved in archaeology, and, and Ray gave a, a, a nice a, a definition of archaeology uh, for us. But when I look at the project tonight, and I'm just going to refer to this if I want, because I wrote down everything that I see here isn't just archaeology. Archaeology can appear very dry, but this is certainly folklore. It's also history, it's architecture, it's photography, it's sociology, it's geography, it's folk life, it's anthropology, it's linguistics, it's ethnology, it's both art and art history, it's calligraphy, it's iconography, heraldry, oral literature, ecology, genealogy, hagiography, signification and symbolism, comparative religions. I could keep on going on. This isn't a, an archaeological project. This is a magnificent project which covers all of those disciplines and, and more besides. And I think that's what you have to think about here, that the value of this isn't just a small community thing. This is everybody integrating and massive amounts of energy and massive amounts of learning, which I think is to be commended. I'll finish off on one point, and I think it's important because um, in many ways it, it, it reinforces my point about the specific to the general. Um, I, I, as I said, I'm interested in mythology and I'm interested in in, in folklore in particular, and uh, I'm very intrigued about Abbey's Well, and one of your contributors tonight was telling me one of the accounts of Abbey's Well, 
um, about St. Governor coming from in a shear and the, the various ways and her vision of the white deer and why she stopped in Abbey's Well and why she went on to Balaburna and so on. Um, that very much is in, in, in the folklore world, is what we call a, 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 a story, an account, a legend. It's what we call a reflex. And um, that reflex of, of whether you're talking about Abbey or in her Irish form, uh, Govnet, or in her uh, pre Christian form as, as Gwivnu, the, the Smith god in Balaburna, or go back, they would be in what we would call a mythological or a religious incarnation of what, what the folklore reflex is. And without going into too much detail, that goes back to what, what anthropologists call a cosmological concern. The cosmological concern here is the, that Saint, Saint Abbey, if you like, represents one form of female who was greatly revered in terms of her fertility and it's no uh, it's to be no surprise at all that her festival on the 11th of February is very close, let's say, to Bridget's festival on the 1st uh, of, of February, and that's the beginning of spring, the beginning of birth and rebirth, and that's a very female festival in itself. And really why I'm putting that little piece out there is that that cosmological concern is reflected in the mythology, and then here, in this room tonight, we hear about the folk reflex. We don't have one without the other. This information, this is the building blocks on which we get together and we understand who we are and where we come from. And a project like this, I can just, I can't come in enough. It's a, it's a pleasure to see, and the biggest pleasure to see, isn't so much the material that you see here on the wall, but it's the enthusiasm of the people that are involved and what it means to the community and how much you are celebrating your, your local heritage. So I want to congratulate everyone involved, and indeed I want to congratulate John as well, on, on his work here. So thank you for... <laughs> I always listen to Shane and uh, uh, like half of it I, I might understand, but the other bit I go, oh, that's why we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to be reminded every once in a while. Thanks a million, Shane. Um,